All right, thank you. Welcome to our presentation about flexible manufacturing. Uh, my name is Oliver Scham, and together with my colleague Jens Schnittke, we want to introduce the new Siemens solution for flexible production control. We call this dynamic production process management. To start off our presentation, I want to show you a short introduction video about current market trends and our motivation why we de developed such kind of system. As you've just seen in the video, solving the challenges of a multivariant production in a frequently changing market and production environment was our mission to develop the Dynamic Production Process Management, or short, DPPM. So how can you benefit in such an environment from our system? With DPPM, you will be able to handle a lot of product variants, so high product variants with low effort, and accelerate the time between engineering a new product variant and executing this variant in production. Secondly, we will smooth your workflow by exploiting flexibility degrees of freedom in choosing machines, but also in choosing flexible workflows for each different product variant. By jointly planning and optimizing work workstations and transportations. We will increase equipment utilization and boost productivity. And last but not least, our intelligent autonomous planning approaches will plan and execute your production processes automatically without any manual interference, but of course, with full transparency on decision taken for subsequent analysis. So far, so good about the benefits of our system Let's now have a closer look about the system itself and its features. In this picture, we try to visualize how we envision a flexible production setup. We have AGV-based intraplant logistics. We have alternative machines, uh, redundant machines for load balancing. We have manual workstations and robotic assembly stations. And of course, also in a flexible production scenario, not everything goes according to plan. That's why we have a dynamic and adaptive schedule on board. What does it mean? So when we initially planned that our AGVs goes to the robotic assembly station, and for any reason this station is not available, for, for instance, because of quality issues or delays, machine failures, what so on, our schedule recognizes this and replans the plan without any manual interference, and this automatically. Besides that reactive error scenario, our algorithmics also proactively leverages the opportunities of choosing alternative machines and also alternatives in the workflow for every single product variant. In doing so, we will boost productivity by avoiding bottlenecks. How this is technically implemented and how our skill-based execution approach, which is underlying this concept, looks like, will be now explained by Jens in more detail. Thank you very much, uh, Oliver. So to understand how this works, we have to briefly return to the conventional approach to production planning. What do you have to do there? Well, you have to manually configure for every element of your bill of process, that is, for every production operation, 
and every product what machine or manual workplace you want to execute it on. And also you have to determine the operation sequence, the order in which you perform operations for every product. You, that's manual configuration effort, and it can be quite time-consuming, especially if you have large product families, high-variant production, and if you want to frequently introduce new products or new product variants. Moreover, in a flexible approach, there may be more than one possibility for signing machines or workplaces or for the order of operations. Now, in the classic approach, you are bound to that one choice that you made, and you cannot so easily change it at production time. However, whether that choice is good or bad will depend on your current product mix and your current order situation. So sometimes it will be quite suboptimal, leading to bottlenecks, leading to delays. So wouldn't it be much, much better if your production control system could autonomously and automatically analyze all the different possibilities and decide on the ones which are most suited for your current production situation. Now, that's exactly what we're doing with the DPPM algorithmics. Based on a formalization of the process requirements, bill of process, bill of materials on the one hand, and the machine self-description on the other hand, in terms of so-called capability ontologies, we are able to automatically determine all the possible production execution workflows and choose the optimal ones for your current production situation. We have tried to illustrate at least one of the optimization aspects in the following small animated uh, scenario. It has a very simple production setup, just a few uh, machines here symbolically represented, just three products, which happen to have to all go through this one big machine in the middle. And what you see, a queue develops. A queue develops, a bottleneck effect occurs, production is slowed down, and your mix span, your total production time, is, is, is more than optimal. However, let's suppose that at least product P3 has flexibility. It can first do the production step on the light blue machine before it goes to the big machine. What do you see? Well, the queue dissolves. There is no more delay, and therefore, the overall make span is improved. And your equipment usage, of course, is also enhanced. DPPM is able to detect, among other, uh, things, this flexibility degree of freedom automatically and make use of it for optimization. Now let me come to the third pillar of our DPPM system algorithmics, and that's related to the joint planning and optimization of production and transport tasks. Here on the left-hand side, you see a real-life production area of at one of our Siemens electronic works. What do you have? You have a number of machines, lasers, uh, robotic assembly, manual workstations, and you also have AGV, automatic guided vehicles, for doing the transports. So you have to plan both types of resources for your production scheduling. Now the conventional planning approach is such that you first set up a machine plan, machine and workplace plan, and then afterwards, you try to satisfy it by a suitable transport plan, so sequential approach. Now, in the case of high variant, very flexible, dynamic production, that is not really a very good approach. It very often leads, in practice, to bottleneck situations. Your transport equipment, your AGVs, will very often not be at the right place at the right time when you need them. They will be perhaps doing other things, or they will be in some faraway corner of your production area. And if you think about this problem more profoundly, you realize that there is only one fundamental remedy to the problem. You have to consider machine workplace planning and transport planning together from the start, not sequentially. Now, that uh, is very easily said, but not so easily done, otherwise people would have done that before. It leads to very complex algorithmics. But we have tackled that task, and we have designed DPPM in such a way that it can do that. 
And we have proved for this particular production scenario that it brings substantial productivity improvements. And this you see on the right-hand side in this simple diagram. On the y-axis, you see the improvement in the throughput or production time. And uh, on the x-axis, you see the lot size. And what you observe is that for small lot sizes, small scale factors, the effect is more pronounced. And that is important for us because we are addressing multivariant production where you typically have small lot sizes. So really, uh, there our algorithmics displays its power. And also, of course, the effect becomes more pronounced the more critical your transport resources are. If you have less AGVs, the effect, of course, is more important than if you have more AGVs. And that's the difference between the light blue and the orange curve. And with that, I'd like to hand back to Oliver for the last part. Thanks. So all the things you've just seen and we presented, so all the features, benefits, and so on, are not just our vision or the future. We actually implemented this system in internal as well as external applications. First of all, you've just seen on the previous slide our implementation in one of our Siemens factories, where we steer a multivariant production almost fully autonomously with AGVs and workstations. Here we have the closed-loop schedule approach, which I initially uh, um, explained, where we evaluate feedback from the shop floor in the schedule and adapt accordingly. Secondly, we are currently implementing our system in the Catena X project environment together with an industrial partner for additive manufacturing. Additive manufacturing itself is a multivariant production, small lot sizes up to lot size one, so almost fully customized. And here our system helps to optimize the way how products are um, planned and produced throughout this production scenario. We give work instructions for operators, evaluate the feed for, feedback from the shop floor, and adapt our plan accordingly. Also here we have the closed loop schedule approach in place. And of course, as we're in the Catena X environment, we provide all the necessary connectors and services in this architecture. I want to close our presentation with a request to you. So if you also see these challenges in your production environment of multivariance, frequently changing supply dates, frequently changing market demands, DPPM could be a suitable solution for you. And we're currently at a state where we proactively search for external partners to co-create this approach and bring this new way of steering a flexible production to life. Thank you very much for your attention. If you have any questions, just feel free to contact us later on in the course of this fair. We will hear. Thank you and have a great day.